How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today is an awesome day because my Lambo is finally finished. <laughs> oh, guys, this car is done and it looks fantastic. It looks spectacular. And I wanted you guys to see it right away because I don't think that this channel is just about the finished product. It's about the journey. It's about the story with the car. It's about our experiences with the car. And I wanna thank each and every one of you that stuck around for this journey. I know this project was particularly difficult specifically because it had so much interior and paint and mechanical work, but we did it. And I thank you so, so much. But I wanna thank not only the people who liked and commented and shared these videos, but I wanna thank the companies that helped make this car a reality. Without them, without their support of this channel, I couldn't do what I'm doing right now. Now I'm super excited to learn what this thing sounds like on the road, but you guys need to get ready for this, honestly because if you don't have good headphones, then you're missing out on a lot of this. Thankfully, today's sponsor has you covered. I'm talking about Raycon. So if you guys haven't heard of Raycon, let me fill you in. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. So they're an awesome value. Also, they sound just as amazing as other top brands. So their latest model, their E25, is their best one yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and more bass. So the compact design of these things make it really, really comfortable, especially because you have different sizes for different ears. So one thing I love is that you don't trip over any cords. This is a big deal for me because I'm always moving around and basically ripping the earbuds out of my ears when I use regular earbuds. So the carrying case doubles as a charger and also it's magnetic. So all you have to do is plop it down here, leave it in there for a little while and it'll be good for another six plus hours. So you guys owe it to yourselves to check this out because it is an awesome value. Now it gets even better because if you go to buyraycon.com slash Tavares, you get 15% off your order. That's buyraycon.com slash Tavares for 15% off your order. Go check it out right now. So let's begin. This video took more than a month to make, if you can believe that. And this car was definitely not in this state when it started. So we're gonna go back in time because uh, this is gonna be a long one. If you guys are new to the channel, I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys enjoy all of my projects, but this is my 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago. And yes, that is the correct way to say it. Murcielago. This car, if you didn't know, was a screen used one in the last Fast and the Furious, the fate of the Furious. And over the course of basically the entire year, I got it to this quality. I mean, this is, it still is a little bit rough around the edges, but those edges are getting rounded off. Now this guy that's just working <laughs> diligently, he is Mr. Clarity Coat. This is Justin. You guys will know him from when we did the Clarity Coat at Color Recon. So uh, how, how you doing, man? I am really hot. Okay. I'd lie if I said I wasn't tired, however, <laughs> Just doing this and cut and buffing the car, you know, we're actually cut and buffing peelable paint. This, if you guys don't know, um, he just explained that this is peelable paint, but what that actually means is it's just a, an invisible layer that adds clarity and also adds a lot of paint protection. So this is called Clarity Coat, and you can see, I'm gonna give you a little sneak preview of what it looks like. This looks, oof, oh, that, dude, dude. That looks good, that is a show car, but we still have a lot to go. Now, you're, you're sanding this down yes. um, because it is, well, it is automotive clear coat that's on here, right? Well, it's our clear coat, so yeah. it's sprayed like automotive clear coat. It looks, it feels like automotive clear coat. However, and it performs like automotive clear coat. Yeah, absolutely. It actually handles um, the outside world, stone chips, rock chips, etc., key scratches, as you'll have seen from the previous video. I handle all of those things way better than regular clear coat because of how it's ha you know how, how it's formulated and also in conjunction with our base. So it's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> what I have to do is I have to put back all of the panels. So bumper, tail lights. I have to put back this panel. I have to put back the engine panel, hood, trunk, hood, 
bonnet, right? Bonnet, boot. Okay, what, whatever, whatever. In the front, by the way, uh, don't worry about these. I'll tell you why I have BMW wheels on later. I have to put on the hood or bonnet and the front bumper and the headlights and then make sure everything fits, make sure nothing fouls and then the car should be done. And would you believe it, it's a few days later. Polishing this car takes forever. We have a new crew here, and uh, you guys will notice these guys. Well, this guy in particular. Uh, these are the E3 Customs guys, and apparently they do make house calls because right now they're just uh, finishing up some odds and ends on the interior. So what are you guys doing? Just some fitment issues. We just were waiting to see how you got everything together. One of your guys just did some welding work for a bracket on either side and it's just like little fiddly uh, detail bits right now but it's all coming together. Yeah, it's just a couple small things, nothing super crazy. Just wanted to have hands on it one more time before, you know, we could say it was finished on Before it right? goes to SEMA, yeah. yeah. So we also got the OEM clips for uh, from Lamborghini and that, that was yeah, who that was thought, rough. Who would have thought they were so crucial? But yeah, I mean, we got the last five in West Palm mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, they, they actually work. All the other ones we bought, nothing worked. So yeah, it, well, it, well, thank goodness we got those. But take a look at how good this looks. This is only with a compound. Now, Justin was compounding it, I was compounding it, but right now, most of the compounding work was done by this guy right here. His name is Rex, and he's the owner of a company called Royal Auto Shield, and I'm gonna get out of the way of that fan. It's a little bit windy. He's been working on this for quite some time. Take a look at how that looks. That is just amazing, and that's just like with one pass of the uh, polisher, so. This all needs to get compounded. This all needs to get uh, polished afterwards. But I mean, how's it? How's it been so far? It's fun. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. It's coming up pretty good. I was worried that somebody that never worked with Clarity Coat before would have an issue with it, but you were totally fine. A hundred percent fine with it. Yeah, it was actually very forgiving. So yeah. It's a lot easier actually than a paint paint job. I mean, there's so many different panels here. We have the side skirts, the hood, the back panel, the bumper, the front bumper's over there. We have the engine compartment, and then we have the car itself. I mean, this is, it's, it's a lot of square footage. And I'm very, very fortunate to have guys like this help out with this project because I could not do it without them. And this guy, well, he's really the MVP because right now he's just, he's seriously knocking all this stuff out. So link in the description below for all of your stuff. Uh, definitely, if you're in the, uh, what, what do you, what service uh, area uh, do you villages. have? The, the villages. The villages, so. Area. So let's say Central Florida, around Orlando, if you're, if you're around that area, and if you need, me. yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. need a car detailed very, very well to a million dollar show car spec, you call this guy right here. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, Matt Mormon told me about you. That, that's, that's how we got together. Matt Mormon of Obsessed Garage, he's like the guy I go to for all my stuff. He recommended you, so that is like, that's, that's the biggest recommendation you can get. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> so right now you can see that there's a lot of people actually on the car. I'm gonna wait till they're done. Then there's gonna be a gigantic montage of me putting this car back together, also taking some stuff off the car and then repainting it and then doing some mechanical work and, well, I think you guys will like it, so uh, let's do it. Actually, before we get to that, I have to concentrate on the back end. And 
The back bumper is really easy to install. It's only a few bolts. However, the brackets for those bolts are not here. I don't have them. They never came with a car, except for one. I do have that one, but I'm having it measured out by my friend Tim. Now, my friend Tim is a little bit shy on camera, but I'm trying to get him more into this YouTube thing. How you doing, man? Oh, hi guys, I'm Tim. Oh, that was, that was pretty good. You should start your own YouTube channel. So Tim has made this into a template and we can now transfer this template into metal because this is the old bracket and I'm gonna have to just drill some holes in it and hopefully now we can put the bumper back on. Okay, now that we have the rear bumper on, it looks really good. Everything fits up nicely. I have very nice panel gaps on the side and the tips in the middle are nice and even. Now, Tim did an awesome job with measuring everything out, but I'll give you a closer look at what I actually did. So we have some aluminum bar stock. Actually, it's not bar stock, it's flat stock. And we have some threaded rod, it's M6, just regular metric rod. And then we have some hockey pucks that I got from Amazon. I think these were like $9 for a whole set. And here it is. This is a Lamborghini bumper support bar. And I have one on the other side as well. These were actually not that hard to make, but there's a lot of stuff on this car that I did have to make. And from the start of that montage to the end of the montage was about a week, actually a little bit more than a week because there was so much stuff that I couldn't film that wouldn't make it into the cut. That wouldn't be very interesting to watch. But I got this side skirt on. I painted this badge in matte black just so it matches the rest of the car. I got the front bumper on. Big shout out to Craig Tim, Old Guy Garage. He helped me get all the gaps dialed in. Now, this is a hand-built car and it was hand-built quite a few times. So when you look at the gaps here, Considering this is an aftermarket bumper, the gaps are pretty good. Now, they're not perfect. This is just a little bit proud, but it's proud on either side. Now, you guys will notice that I have these missing, and these are the headlight washer covers. So, headlight washer comes up, it sprays on the headlights, and then just makes a mess, and then they come back down, and then the cover closes up. I'm not gonna use the headlight washers because those always break and I don't really like using them. They get washer fluid all over the car, so we're just gonna delete those. But the covers themselves are actually really, really expensive and they're not available. So I think I have a better idea as to how I'm gonna fix this gap. So that's why I'm out here. You're joining me in a awesome shop in this amazing countryside because my friend 
has this car. My friend, Mr. Craig from No Spots Pro. What was that? Old Guy Garage, No Spots Pro. We're here because we need to do some work to my car, but first, before we do that, I just wanna take a look at this. This is a newer version of my car. This is an LP640. It has more power. It sounds even better. Actually, you guys will know this car from the rev battle that I had. Craig also does all of his own work. You see, he has a Ben Pack lift, shout out to Ben Pack. And he has the wheels off, he has the bumper off. He did some detailing work around here. It just looks amazing. I wish my car looked like this. But right now, we are focusing on this. I have some odds and ends that I need to get done. This is the front cowl piece that is, uh, well, it's seen some better days. It's ABS plastic, I hope, and we need to fix it because this little guy goes on the end of here. And you can see that it was fixed very poorly. Uh, I think it was Bondo or Panel Bond or something. So we're gonna try to fix this and make this all one piece. But one thing that Craig did, and it saved me a lot of money, is this. This is a piece that covers up the headlight washer. This is the other side. This is a stock headlight washer. And this is what Craig made out of raw aluminum. He basically copied the angle, he copied everything about this. Well, the saving grace is that the original one is, how much was it? It was like seven? Uh, 795 each. Yeah, 795 plus the hinge is how like much? 500 for the hinge. <laughs> $500 for the hinge. So $1,300 versus, versus uh, whatever. I think I paid like 20 bucks for aluminum. For both pieces? For both, yeah, for both pieces. Plus, I mean, it's a big sheet of aluminum, so we yeah, could Yeah, so we could make 20 of these if we felt so inclined. I'm really, really excited to see how to make one of these. You got it. What are you using there, Freddy? Uh, this is truck bed coating, so we're gonna be uh, coating the, the bed of my <laughs> Lamborghini. Um, I'm using this just because it hides a lot of crimes, um, just to make sure that we have the appropriate amount of texture going on this uh, piece of uh, plastic and Bondo and epoxy. So it's gonna look okay. Uh, just to the untrained eye. I am gonna replace this part at some point, but just to get this in the show and to make sure that this isn't a complete eyesore, we're just gonna do it like this, and it's actually gonna look pretty good, I think. Okay, now comes the time where we're gonna make one of these. We actually already made this one. This one is the one going on my car, but we're making the other side, and that is this guy right here. Now this is an OEM piece off of Craig's car. We're gonna make it out of this piece of aluminum. How, uh, how thick is that aluminum? This is a uh, 3 16ths. This shouldn't be hard. You just, you just cut it out, you use some scissors, and yeah, then we're the done, right? I yeah. got the scissors, the aluminum. <laughs> so the whole, the whole idea here is to make a template off of this piece first. Now we wanna be careful we don't wanna damage that piece. So I'm just gonna show you what I did originally. And I've got to cut a little square out of the bottom because it has a, the uh, hinge arm attached to it yet. Okay. So we're just gonna trim it out. I'm not trying to be fancy because I've already got one made. So this is demonstrating. So what we have to do is clear that little bracket there on the back. Okay. So that's what we do. That's why we cut that in there. Now we're gonna trace it out just like you would anything else and try to be as accurate as possible. And this will serve as what we transfer over to the aluminum, correct. correct? This will be the template. So once we've got it traced, and make sure that I've got most of it on there. Yeah. So now we can take it, we've got our pattern, and mm -hmm. we can go ahead and cut this out with just a pair of scissors. This is uh, file folder holders. Okay. You know, just hanging file folders. Yeah. It's stiff enough. You don't want to use cardboard because you don't get enough detail. Okay. So you got to use something that's small. 
So it's almost like cardboard, or it's a little bit thicker than a piece of paper, but not as thick as cardboard. Right. Okay, so once we've traced it, we go to, I've already gone ahead and cut it out, so I've cut out an actual part that's gonna represent the actual finished piece. And I sprayed the aluminum, the raw aluminum, so I get a good trace on it with what they call Toolmaker's Ink Blue, or Dicom Blue. Okay, so what, what, is, what does that do? This is just an aerosol spray, mm -hmm. and what it'll do, once it gets rolling, it'll turn the, turn the aluminum blue once it gets going. And once it dries, you can actually sit there and scribe the actual the part into the aluminum and gives you a nice cutting edge. Oh, gives nice. you an exact match. Wow. So this is off the other piece that we made. When I made that, that particular piece there, I duplicated it here so the parts would be exact from left to right. Okay. Even cool. though there was a variation a little bit from the trace. Mm -hmm. So this gives us a little place to basically scrape and give us a nice line. Oh yeah, wow. So and gonna, this all, this comes out with- This uh, will just wipe off with mm -hmm. uh, lacquer thinner. Oh, very it'll nice. Just, it'll be clean as what you see on your finished part. Cool, so uh, aluminum is sometimes hard to cut and sometimes hard to work with as far as shaping it. So you need specific things to work with aluminum. What, what do you use? Well, on this one, I've abused my, uh, for putting that curve in there, I have a little hand roller. Oh. A little cheapy Harbor Freight hand roller. Uh -huh. And it's doing 3 sixteenths, and I, I've pretty much abused the heck out of that. <laughs> Uh, it's still working, so I'm going to keep using it. But if you, the material on this though is what they call 5052 aluminum. Yeah. So if you get too hard like this, everybody talks about T6 aircraft aluminum. Mm -hmm. That's too hard. Uh, it's too hard to work with. It's not flexible enough. So the 5052 gives it a nice base. Mm -hmm. It's very clean to file, and it'll do a good job when you do a final part. Okay. Cool. So uh, now all we have to do is uh, what you have to do. What well, what I have to do is cut this out. Yes, cut. Well, we're cutting this, or are we transferring this to? No, we're gonna just cut. These are already made. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead. You're gonna cut one of these out, mm -hmm. and we're gonna shape it. Okay. Cool. So I'm just gonna take those scissors and just cut it out, right? Yeah. Well, I've got a little bandsaw for that too. Let's do it. All right. All right, so now we have that done. My arm is glittery, kind of looks like I've been in a, well, never mind. Uh, so <laughs> now uh, Craig has these uh, aluminum jaws he put in a vise because uh, you don't want to put steel on aluminum. It'll do bad things, it'll okay. mar it, yeah. So what we're gonna do now is actually, you're gonna do it, mm -hmm. is we're gonna trim down to the line. Freddie did a great job. He's cut left about a 32nd to a 16th of an inch all the way around. And now we're gonna file by hand, mm -hmm. not use a belt sander. We're okay. gonna do this by hand. Just like they did in Italy. Just like they used to do it in the old days. Yeah. We have, I have a belt sander, mm -hmm. but we're gonna do it this way. Okay. Because this, this is more disciplined. Gotcha. All right, and we are done. Can you tell which one is mine and which one is Craig's? I bet you can't. Actually, I bet you can. Craig's is the one that has the bend in it that we still haven't put on mine. But this is this look. This is looking pretty good. Uh, I just finished it with 150 on the edges, and then we went over the whole thing with 400. Now, what we have to do after this is we have to bend it, give it that very, very slight arch, and then we have to wrap it. So. Um, Craig says we should wrap it in this. I think the green. I think the green is awesome. Don't you guys think so? I think the green better than the black. But... No, 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 no. Uh, so we're not. <laughs> we're not going to do green. We're just going to do gloss black. Uh, this is a 3M 1080 
It's just, uh, it's usually what you do on parts like this. And we're gonna wrap it, probably use uh, some heat gun yep. on the on the edges. Treat the edges, corners. Yeah, and then, uh, then we should have a very good, very OEM looking part that I can just double-sided tape onto my car and then not worry about for years to come. That's basically how it's going to be. It's got to come up about a sixteenth of an inch, but yeah, we can make that up with tape. Yep. And boom, that is that is pretty on there. And now we can do them in black. We'll wrap them real quick, and we'll try to check them one more time. Dude, this is this is awesome. All right, it's really cool. Put that down. Yeah, we so, don't want to drop that bumper. I know I complained about my bumper being expensive. This is fully made of carbon fiber. I don't even want to know how much this costs new. I can tell you. How much is it? 20 grand. 20 grand? That's it. The bumper's off because there was a little uh, incident with a hubcap flying off. Actually, you have, you have some footage of that, don't you? I do. All right, so take a look at these. So this looks like real carbon fiber, and we made sure that the weave is symmetrical and it's all going the same place. Dude, these look these look amazing. These look really, really good. So I think uh, another thing that we can do is uh, ceramic coat it. What do you think? I'll do that. Okay. I've got some here, and uh, I'll do that while you get other stuff ready. All right, cool. So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna let you do that, and... Uh, I'm actually gonna I'll work on it. go uh, hey, take, take something off his car that uh, he doesn't know about. I'm just gonna just gonna take this and take this. How you doing over there, dude? Pretty good. You want two cups under or one? Uh, we could do two. He's not gonna miss these. So this was a very, very productive day. Take a look at this. You can't even tell that anything was broken. This was broken in three pieces, and this looks OEM. I've, I've really, dude, we did a great job. Thank you, sir. Basically, I have to go back and install all this on my car. Your car is a little nicer than mine at this point. But uh, I see that thing over there, and I was, I was gonna ask you, can, can we do like a cold start? Because I, I know that that car sounds really good. Been sitting all day, so it's cold. Oh yeah, it's real cold. I haven't driven it all today, so yeah, all good. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> That's pretty good. Yes, it is. <laughs> Now take a look at what I got here. These are the finished headlight washer covers and they go in perfectly like so. One right there and another one right here. That looks, that looks really good. And this cost basically like $20. It was just some aluminum and it took a lot of time and just some, some fiddling and finesse. All I have to do is double-sided tape them and then they should stay just the way they are. Now, another thing I wanted to point out, not just the carbon fiber door sill that I got from Driftworks. So in here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a vent and that vent goes into this hose. That hose goes all the way into the engine bay where it goes into the alternator. So this is a cooled alternator and what I didn't know is that this hose was broken on my car. Now I replaced this hose. This hose would have been like two or $300 from Lamborghini, but I replaced this hose with a aircraft supply hose. And this is just aircraft parts. I got this for 20 bucks. So this is perfectly fine. It's definitely rated for what we're gonna do. But the vent itself was a little bit different. You see this vent, I didn't even know that this was a piece that needed to go on. This originally is a piece that supposedly goes right here, and from Lamborghini, it is $1,200.
So what I did is I adapted a piece from my wet dry vac and it does exactly the same thing. I ABS welded a little piece of stainless steel and I just connected it to a mounting hole up here and now we have a very sturdy vent. So this solution is a little bit less than OEM but first of all nobody's gonna notice and I think it's gonna work just as well. Also take a look at the the custom hexagon ABS that I got for this for the grill. I think it really looks good. I actually think it looks a little bit better than it is stock. But another thing that took a long time that I didn't exactly show you guys, but some of you will have known this on Instagram, is the fact that I did the AC system. So the AC is really weird on this car because the low pressure port is right here. So you have to take the wheel off. You don't have to take the liner off or anything, but that's where the pressure port is. That's where you fill up with Freon or R134A. So I got the gauges that I needed. I made sure to run a vacuum, made sure that there were no leaks in the lines or anything like that, but I couldn't get it to work. I kept on having this issue. The compressor right here was clicking on and off, just immediately on and off. It didn't want to do anything. And then I talked to Mark Guttersnake from uh, AGX, and he said, hey, give me a picture of what your compressor lines look like. And then he goes, hey, dummy, your lines are backwards. And apparently they were backwards. So all I had to do was swap these lines. I got new O-rings for them. I swapped the lines, I ran a vacuum, I put new refrigerant in it, and the AC now works fine. So it just goes to show you that even though this car is almost done, I am still getting a little bit of crap from the movie studio when they remove this engine and put stuff back backwards. But right now we have to put everything on the back back. So we're going to put on the rear spoiler panel. We're going to put on the actual spoiler that comes up here. We're going to put on the grills. We're going to put on the taillights and we're going to put on the bonnet. And I have new struts for that. So this should all be totally 100% done. Fingers crossed. I need more fingers than that. Well, would you look at that? The rear end is done and it looks fantastic. Everything is lined up and where it should be for the most part. Now, one thing I really don't like and one thing I should probably get out of the way are these taillights. Now, these taillights are the stock taillights on this car. They are pre-LP640 taillights and they don't actually look very good. And a popular mod that people do on these cars is just black them out. I don't like the black look. I actually do like the LP taillights way more. The reason why I didn't get those is because they cost $6,000. So I think I'll deal with these for a little while. But other than that, just take a look at the fitment of everything. That $12,000 Premier 4509 bumper, it fits perfectly. That fab speed exhaust fits perfectly. And I have brand new struts, actually shocks, right here and in the front as well. And these actually are not Lamborghini parts. They're just the right length. And I think these were like 15 bucks on Amazon and they work just fine. Now I am missing a piece right here. I had to paint that, that's somewhere over there. But the engine bay is looking pretty dang spiffy if I do say so myself. I will have to do some final cleaning after everything is said and done, uh, especially on these panels because yeah, there's just a lot of grease and stuff on it. So a lot of you have been asking, what am I going to do with the wheels, the tires, and the brakes? The brakes 
are looking really, really bad. They were painted by the movie studio. That was actually the same paint that they used on the car. And you can contrast that with what we have over here. It's a real big difference. Now, these have to come off. I have to sandblast them, and then I have to paint them myself. Paint, and then clear coat, and then make sure that they all match this beautiful Arancio Argos color. But the wheels themselves are a little bit more complicated because the wheels have to get powder coated. So let's go do that. All right, guys, I am here at Performance Coat in Orlando, Florida, and I can't wait to see what my wheels look like. And... Woo! Those are nice. So I had these repowder coated. This is in gloss and the faces, I believe they're over there. And hey, how you Hello doing? Guys, good to see you again. <laughs> this is Mike from Performance Coat and uh, he's the guy behind all of this. This is a very busy shop. And you have a lot of stuff that uh, you do as far as um, coating and powder coating and all the all the ways that you can basically protect uh, a finish of a piece of metal in lots of different colors. What'd you do with uh, with my wheels? Well, we just sandblasted them all down bare metal and recoated them all in the gloss of matte black. All right, so I just want to take a look at the detail here because uh, these are the lips and this is what I'm really concerned about. And these came out spectacular, man. This is this is really, really nice. Now, I'm not really a black wheels sort of dude, but I figure that this is for a movie car, you know, so that's the way it was in the movie, and this is going to SEMA, so I figure this should probably look okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, look, that looks amazing. That looks really, really good. Now, these, these wheels were actually kind of expensive. Uh, I looked them up, and they're like five thousand dollars. So probably that's on the cheap end. I'm yeah, surprised. I thought they were going to be ten thousand. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> three-piece wheels are are fun to take on and off. Um, hopefully, they don't give me too much of an issue, but uh, we'll see what that process is. But I want to know what the process is for actually powder coating because last time we were here, we did some ceramic coating, and I, n I understand the powder coating process is a little bit different. It's a little bit different. It's using static e electricity versus a liquid. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, other than that, it's the same as it goes into an oven and bakes. Okay, cool. Dude, thank you so much. The, the wheels look completely redone. They look amazing. You did an awesome job, as usual. So if anybody wants to get any sort of coating done, whether it's powder coating or ceramic coating, just hit this guy up. I will have everything in the link in the video description. It's not just in the local area. You can also send Mike your parts Absolutely. and he will have them to you in a reasonable time. You actually did it really quickly. We, we like to have a fast turnaround because we know you want your parts back and we don't want to own your parts either. <laughs> awesome. Dude, thank you so much. No problem, man. All right, now I gotta go put this car back together. <laughs> so check these out. Now I know that this is a bit of a cooking show situation because you guys have probably seen this in the back of my shots, but these have been ready and I wanted to make sure that they cured properly. And also I wanted to show you the entire process of putting these wheels back together because I actually have never done three piece wheels before. And some people say that these are, well, they're a pain in the butt. So we're gonna go step by step 
and hopefully we won't get any leaks at the end of it. Well, that was an adventure. I skipped ahead a little bit to have the tires on, but the three-piece wheels were an interesting sort of thing. So these, wow, they're really, really big and heavy. Now these are three-piece forged aluminum wheels, and at the back you can see that there's 40 bolts. And each of these bolts had to be torqued specifically, and these were around 15 foot-pounds. But you have to do it, usually in a star pattern, I actually did it one across from another, just so they're evenly spaced. Now this might not be the best way to do it, you guys can let me know in the comments if I was doing anything wrong. But, I got everything on, I got the sealant on, which is actually the most important part. I used some RTV, I made sure that the mating surfaces were nice and clean. I cleaned them up with a scotch Bright pad, I cleaned that off, and then I put some RTV, I let it sit for 24 hours, and then I installed the tires, and these are Michelin PS4S's. The Pilot Sport 4S is a tire that I've been using for a while, and it's definitely what this car needs because it's a high performance tire and it's a bit of a high performance car. Take a look at the size though. 345, 30, 20. This is enormous. This is gonna be absolutely insane. Now they look a little dirty just because I've had my grubby mitts on them, but they're gonna be nice and clean. I love the powder coating job that Micah Performance Coat did and I can't wait to get these things on the car. However, the car needs something else before I put these wheels on, and that is these calipers. Now, I've already done so much on this car, and Rex is uh, here, and he's just making this car nice and shiny, and hopefully I don't mess it up. But these brakes are looking really, really tired, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those off, I'm gonna sandblast them in my little uh, Harbor Freight sandblasting cabinet, then I'm going to paint them in the same Arancio Argos color. And just like that, the brakes are done. Now, I know I probably owe you a little montage of how to do the brakes, but I couldn't be bothered just because I was doing this all night. In fact, this is several days later because like a lot of things on this car, there were a lot of little things that needed to be taken care of. So let's go over those. But first, the brakes, they look, well, they look a lot better. Now they actually match the car. And if you take a look back here, I have the matching calipers, and I also did the e-brake, or parking brake caliper, in flat black. I also got new scripts. Basically, uh, these are just new stickers that I put on, and then I clear coated over the top. Now, the clear coat did take a while to set because I had to find the specific clear coat that was necessary. Uh, I had a few problems with some other clear coats from a can, and those clear coats basically turned milky because I have 90% humidity here in Florida. In addition to the brakes, we also bled the brakes, we also bled the clutch, and when I say we, I mean the royal we, and we also lower the car a half inch. It was pretty easy, these are adjustable coilovers, and I did that because when we deleted the front drive shaft and front differential, the car basically sat a lot higher because there's no weight in the front anymore. So we lowered a half inch, hopefully that should be enough. Now, take a look at the interior, and the interior has a radio, and it also has a door panel, it also has mirrors, and it also has glass. So this is 100% complete, and I can't wait to drive it. Now, 
The only thing stopping us from driving it is the wheels. But since the wheels and tires are on and they're balanced and they're mounted, I figured these are good to go, so they might as well go on the car. So now that's what we're gonna do. But the Eagle Eye amongst you will notice that I don't have any fender liners and those are over here. Now they are in not in good shape. I mean, this is in, yeah, this is in pretty, pretty poor shape. I am going to order new ones. I don't know when they're gonna get here, but that is something that I do need to take care of, but that's not gonna stop us from basically finishing this car and getting it on the road. That's right, getting this car on the road. I'm not sure if we're gonna do a test drive in this episode or the next episode, but it's definitely coming very, very soon. I am so excited because this car has come such a long way. So let's get those wheels on, let's get this car on the ground, and let's get this project done. So there comes a point in every car guy's life when he just looks at a car and he can't believe his eyes. This is so far beyond anything I thought I would be able to own. This is absolutely incredible. I, I, I really, really have no words for this. I love how this came out. This is this is amazing. So the paint work is fantastic. The clarity coat is fantastic. The wheels are awesome. All the hours and hours I've spent putting body panels on and putting vents in and painting calipers and making sure every body line was serviceable and right, it, it just paid off in such a big, big, big way. I mean, this is no longer some rough around the edges mercy. This is exactly what I wanted from the beginning. I just didn't know it yet. This is the million dollar show car that you guys will see at SEMA. All right, that's a little, uh, a little squeaky, that's okay. The interior is absolutely amazing. And I got all the panels in, got the door panel on, and actually let me, uh, let me sit inside this cocoon. Gotta get in butt first. It's a little weird. <laughs> oh yeah. Take a look at that. Look at that. Everything works. I have the sub connected. I have the speakers connected. Let's close this door. It is really quiet in here. Sorry, I just got a blast of copywritten material. But take a look at the forged carbon. But the steering wheel looks perfect. The dash looks perfect. Everything in this car just looks absolutely amazing. And of course, I have a fire extinguisher because, you know, it's an Italian car, so let's, uh, let's be realistic here. Now, if you can hear what's going on outside, that's the reason why I'm not taking it on a test drive right now. It's, uh, it's raining, uh, it's raining pretty good. So the drive is gonna be on the next episode. 
and I hope you guys can join me on that because this car is going to be absolutely amazing and hopefully we don't have any issues that prevent us from doing that. Well, there are a few little bits and pieces left to do on this car, but they can be done off camera. It's no big deal. This car right now, as it sits, is SEMA show ready. This has a working AC. This has a working stereo. The engine works. The transmission works. The wheels work. The brakes work. Everything on this car works. Actually, I haven't tested everything, but I think it's going to work. And you're going to see it in the next episode on this car driving and hopefully making a lot of noise and making a lot of power and giving me a very, very big smile. But until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like this that are now million dollar show cars, million dollar show cars, guys, you guys need to wrench every day.